Hi guys, welcome back to So Crafty Nana. My name is Teresa and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today I have another card video for you. A very simple backfold card uh, that can be made for any occasion using um, any designer series paper, uh, all kinds of uh, die cuts or uh, cut out embellishments, punches. I used a lot of punches. I have, I don't know, six or so samples for you. Here's one of them that I wanted you to see first. So this is the one we're gonna recreate today uh, with the same designer series paper and stamp. And the backfold card, the interesting thing, interesting thing with the backfold is that you fold this piece back to pop it open. So that's how it works. It's that's why it's called a backfold. Super simple card. Doesn't use a lot of cardstock or designer series paper. You can use scraps for it, um, and it's just a very simple, pretty card. Comes together very quickly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take you down to the desk. Again, like I always say, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I so much appreciate it. I'm almost at a hundred subscribers, which is just fab fabulous. Um, and so I'm so excited for that. So if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button after you give me that like, please comment below as well. Let me know what you're interested in. And I'm happy to try to do videos to, to give you what you want. Um, I do have the layout for this card. It's a simple cut so and simple scores. So I'll hold that up on the screen once we go down to the desk so you'll see that. I do have a blog post that goes along with this uh, video. So down in the description box is a link to that blog post. You can go over and get more details on the supplies that I used for each of my samples there. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. This is another fun, simple, fold that anybody can do with any of your supplies that you have. So let's get started. All right, so here we are at my desk and here's the card again, a little more close up. And this is the way that the, the card works with that back fold. So this is super simple. I used the lighter than air designer series paper, which is what we're gonna use. I used the cloud punch which is just a simple cloud punch. We're gonna use that to cut these two um, die cuts out. I used this throughout the year cling stamp set just for that thank you. This is a really nice sentiment um, stamp set. It has pretty much throughout the entire year, hence the name, <laughs> um, you know, New Year's all the way through to Christmas, so, or holidays. And then these are the embellishments that I used. This is the opaque faceted gems. These are some of my absolute favorites. I just love the sparkle you get off of these gems. And it's two sizes in those three colors, Calypso Coral, Pecan Pie, and Pool Party, which happens to be one of the colors in this paper. So that's what we're gonna use to make this card. Uh, before we get started on cutting and making that card, I do wanna show you the other samples that I have. Um, I do have a lot, and then I'll also pull out our measurement guide here in just a minute. So let me pull over the first one. This is called Cutest Cows. Let me see if I can move that out of the way a little bit more. There we go. This is called Cutest Cows Stamp Set, and this is the back fold. So it says, it's your special day, milk it for all it's worth. And so the way that I did this card, again, it's this cutest cow stamp set. And so this um, bundle comes with the cutest cows or the cow builder punch. I guess it's called the cutest cows punch, which punches out all of the parts of one of the cow stamps. And then you have some other options for cow stamps. So what I ended up doing was for this one on the front, this is all cut out with the punch. I cut out the little palms with black and then I cut out the rest of it on just white. I used my uh, Stampin' Blends markers to color in the black and a little bit of the pink there uh, on the muzzle and the ears. So this one is popped up on um, dimensionals as is the special day. And the it's your special day, I just used our 
one and three quarter inch circle punch and our two inch circle punch. And that's what it's layered on black there. And then what I did on the inside, just sort of for fun, was I used the other stamp that has the little udder showing because I said milk it for all it's worth. So I wanted the one with the little udder. So I stamped that directly on here um, on the card and then colored it in again with Stampin' Blends. So I thought that was just really cute. And then I embellished it with the iridescent adhesive back discs, which again, these are really fun. I use this red color down here, which is actually Poppy Parade. These are flat dots. They're iridescent and they are completely flat. So I love that about them. If you're mailing cards, that, that's really important to have that. So I'm going to move those out of the way. And then the next one that I have is this one. And this one is a hello there. And I colored in, I stamped and colored in the Blueberry Bunch from the Blueberry Bunches stamp set. And I used the Hello There stamp. And then on the inside, I used the Sending You Bunches of Birthday Wishes. And I stamped that in Pecan Pie. Um, just used some designer series paper here. Um, this is the back, uh, like the B side of a sheet of designer series paper. And then I just used the um, double oval punch. I just used the scalloped one for the front and I wanted to just fit that hello there in there sort of and nestle it behind the blueberries. And then I used these really cool champagne iridescent dots. These are loose dots that you can purchase. They're so pretty and there's three sizes. So I used one of each of those sizes. They give a great sparkle, really pretty. And so again, there's that back fold. I used very vanilla cardstock on this one just because I thought that looked nice. And I stamped and cut and um, fussy cut out the blueberry bunch also on very vanilla cardstock. So that's that one. Thought that one turned out really pretty. And then the next one I have was another fun one. So this one uses our um, Jungle Pals stamp set. So this stamp and die set are available during celebration just through the end of February. So you can get these two uh, for making a purchase in February. And I believe that you get both of them if you make a hundred dollar purchase. So um, really cool set. And I just went ahead and I colored in the little animals. I used the heartfelt hexagon punch to punch out that sentiment label. And then I used the heartfelt hellos, which is again, another celebration item. You can get this stamp set free with a $50 purchase in February. So really, really good deal. Um, they're really nice, uh, large size stamps. I, I can see myself using this Hello constantly. It's just really pretty. So I did pop up my uh, little alligator or crocodile, I don't know the difference, um, on dimensionals. And then I put my little um, that. What is that? Uh, I don't even know. Parrot? I guess it's a parrot. Um, I put my little parrot up there on the label. And then what I did on this one is I used the dies. Whoops, it's over here. The dies have the animals, but they also have these extra really nice dies. There's leaves and flowers. And there was this one, which I just thought would be really perfect. It fits perfectly behind that hexagon. So what I did was I went ahead and I cut that out in grainy apple green and I adhered it to the back of my sentiment. And then I went ahead and adhered another white one over top of that just to hide the back because that does show when you open up the card. Um, you wouldn't have to do that, but I did. And then I couldn't resist but putting the little uh, sloth on the inside. So um, again, I colored these animals with my Stampin' Blend blends markers. I stamped them in uh, just the Tuxedo Memento Black ink and I sent, stamped my sentiment in the same ink. Now these um, embellishments are those same embellishments that I used on the cows. 
Again, really, really flat. I use the Granny Apple Green color here. And again, these are the iridescent adhesive back dots. So that's another card. I think that's really, really cute. So those are some of the samples I had. And then the next two that I have to show you are very different. So I'm a subscriber to huh, Paper Pumpkin, if I can say that. And I, I have been subscribing to Paper Pumpkin for over a year now. I love um, getting the kit. You get a kit once a month in the mail. Um, this month, January, was Lovely Lavender. And uh, it's just a really great program. If you're interested in learning about that, please just go to my um, link in the description to my website and you can take a look at that information there. Um, but essentially it's, you know, it is a subscription. You can pause your subscription. You can go month to month. You can cancel at any time. It's a super easy uh, subscription box. Now mine, I've been into it and made up a bunch of things, so it's all torn apart. So I'm not doing an unboxing for you, but essentially it comes with everything you need to make the projects for that month in the box everything you need except for uh, maybe a scissors if you need to trim something but it comes with punch outs and and uh, a stamp set and this time the stamp set also um, came with a add-on of these dies and so these dies these four dies were an add-on they're still available for January, February, and March paper pumpkin kits. So they coordinate with all three kits. So really, really cool that that, um, that Stampin' Up! has done that for us. So we've got the add-on die set, which I went ahead and purchased. And then this stamp set is what came with the paper pumpkin kit. So this is just an image of what that stamp set looks like. So I'm telling you all of this because I just decided I wanted to try to make some of these backfold cards using supplies in the paper pumpkin kit. So this is all supplies in the paper pumpkin kit. This um, label was cut out with the add-on die, but the stamp is actually the stamp from the kit. And then um, these were die cuts from the kit that I used. Oops. This little purple one I did die cut from one of the from the add-on die, but this all you know this beautiful beautiful um, paper all came from cutting up pieces of the kit, and and then I stamped again the stamp from the kit on the inside. But I thought that made just a beautiful backfold card. So there's another example, and then I had to take it a little bit further because yeah. I just had to, um, and I thought, what if I could make that um, as a horizontal card? So I played around with the measurements and I made a horizontal card. This wasn't a 100% success. Um, and actually, I'll be honest, this is my third version. <laughs> I had to take it apart a few times to try to get it right. But this square came as part of the kit and I really, really wanted to use it. And this die cut also came as part of the kit, but it didn't, I didn't feel like it looked right if I over, if I put that over to the right. It just felt awkward because this square was perfect for that. So I added this um, die cut square. It is from the Stylish Shapes dies. It's the second from the smallest square on the Stylish Shapes dies. I ink blended it a little bit with um, Gorgeous Grape ink because my thick white cardstock that I used was a little different white than the cutouts from the Paper Pumpkin kit and that bothered me. So I went ahead and I ink blended it a little to give it that little bit of lavender and I used a stamp and stamped for everything. So it says thank you for everything. And then if you fold back, it opens up uh, into the card. Now why I say it's not a complete win is when you fold it back, it doesn't actually go underneath without a little bit of manipulation here to get it to go underneath to stay. So it's not quite a success, but I'm going to call it a success because I think it's pretty. And again, this used the, um, I used one of the card bases that I cut up to make this background um, 
faux designer series paper and again I used die cuts from the kit so I think it's it's pretty I loved this uh, lavender kit I think it's so pretty um, these stamps came from two stamp sets that I already had uh, inked and tiled is where I got the thank you and then ice cream swirl is where I got that for everything so just wanted to show you those as sort of a bonus they're you know they're maybe to give you an idea that if you've got some extra die cuts sitting around uh, from anything, any kind of a kit that you've had, or you know maybe it's a ephemera pack that you've gotten or something like that, you could use them to make something like this with just a little piece of cardstock and you've got that. So I wanted to share that with you even though it's sort of a cheat of a sample <laughs> since it used the kit. All right, so that was a lot of talking and a lot of things on my desk. Let me clear away my desk and then we are going to get started with this. All right, so here we are and I wanted to share with you the measurements for this card. So this uh, guide is also on my website that I mentioned on my blog post. So um, I just made a quick diagram for you to sort of explain how this card works. I know we're used to a five and a half by eight and a half, but you're actually gonna use a five and a half by seven and a half piece of cardstock. And then you've got two score lines, one at three and a quarter and one at six and a half. Um, and that is what this one is gonna fold back and this one is going to fold forward. So, um, and this is not, um, what do I want to say? <laughs> this is this is not to size, um, but it's just to give you an example and tell you where those go. So again, I'll have this guide over on my blog post as well, but if you want to take a screenshot, I'll move my hands out of the way and you can take a screenshot of that. All right, so we're going to be using uh, thick white basic card basic white cardstock. Um, you could use regular, you don't need to use thick. I just happen to have thick sitting here next to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and use thick, and I'm gonna cut at five and a half. All right. And then I'm gonna cut one inch off so that this will be five and a half by seven and a half. And I just do that this way rather than opening my arm out, but you could just open the arm out and then cut it at seven and a half. So now I have my five and a half by seven and a half, and I need to score here um, one inch in, which would be at six and a half. So I'm gonna score here at six and a half. All right, so I've got my little score that's gonna be my back fold piece. And then I need to score also here at three and a quarter. So I'm gonna measure on this side at three and a quarter and I'm gonna give that a score. All right, so that becomes my back fold card. See how that works? Pretty nice, very simple. Now I'll burnish that when we get a little farther. So then the next pieces, I'm gonna bring my little sample in here so you can see the sample again. So then the next thing that I need to do are the two other pieces of designer series paper. So I chose to use the lighter than air. What is it called? I'm sorry, I called it lighter than air. It's not called lighter than air, it's sunny days. I'm using the sunny days paper. I called it lighter than air earlier. Um, so I'm using the sunny days paper. I loved these clouds with my cloud punch. I thought that was really appropriate. Um, it has some beautiful, I could have used this side and actually you could even um, use some of the raindrops and some of the clouds, cut a little bit of this out, overlap it if you wanted to. There's a lot of other pretty paper in here that you could use. Um, and I did consider, you know, they, there's some, bumblebee paper, there's some pretty flowers, but I really liked the, the clouds and I decided on the clouds. And then for the back side, I didn't want, or for the um, small strip, I didn't want 
pieces of clouds. I, I thought that might look a little odd. So I chose this one because I thought that went so well. And again, it's from the same paper pack. It has these pretty cherries on the back, but we're gonna go ahead and use that for that um, additional little strip on the side. So that's, again, that's the Sunny Days paper pack. And if memory serves me correctly, I think that is a celebration pack. So uh, you can get that through Celebration with a $50 order, and that's only through the end of January. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my piece here. So if you'll remember, um, the piece, and I know this doesn't look right, but the piece that we're talking about is three and a quarter by five and a half. So we're gonna cut that a quarter inch smaller both ways. So we're gonna cut it three by five and a quarter, and that's gonna be our panel for the front of the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut here at three to cut me a strip off. And then I'm gonna decide if I want down here or up here. Um, I think I'm gonna just do the bottom part and we're gonna do five and a quarter. We're gonna cut that off. So that's gonna be my little panel piece. That's gonna go on the front, I like that. And then I'm gonna keep that paper out because I'm gonna need that again. So then my uh, little strip piece, remember this is a one inch, piece, uh, one inch section here. So I'm cutting this at seven eighths of an inch. And I know that's not a quarter inch smaller, but I, I like, this is personal preference. If you were going based on the normal measurements, you would do this at three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter. I like less border on this particular backfold card. I don't know why, but for me, that's just my personal preference. So I'm gonna cut this at seven eighths by five and a quarter. All right. And so that's gonna be my little side piece there. So the last thing we need is the two um, punches and so what I did with this this punch is it, it's the same punch I just staggered them but I found a design or a cloud on my paper that I wanted to cut out and I used that so I don't have that exact same one I don't have a whole one that I could cut out and this wastes a little bit of paper. So if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do this. You could cut it out of the other designer series paper. You could cut it out of, you know, the back side if you wanted to. But I, I don't mind if I'm using this paper. Um, so on this one, let's see what we want. I think I want this black or gray and white stripe. I think that'll really stand out because I've got these darker colors on this one. Um, so I think that's the one I'm gonna try to punch out. So let me move my paper cutter out of the way. Um, well, actually I may need it. Let me see if my punch will reach that. Oh yeah, okay, so my punch will reach that. Otherwise I would have had to trim something off, but it will reach and I can get the entire punch punched out of that striped paper. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. Let me move that out of the way and pull this off. Now we're done with our paper trimmer. And then I'm just gonna use that same thick white. I have another scrap of thick white here that I'm gonna use to stamp and then cut out my thank you. So these are my pieces, I'll just put them up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my black memento ink and I'm gonna get my thank you stamp and a block. And this is a clean stamp, so that means that it has foam, so I don't need to put anything underneath it. I'm just gonna ink it up good and give it a stamp. And that looks pretty good. Um, now, one thing I was thinking and I didn't mention is you have to think about the orientation. So I wouldn't have wanted to put that like in the middle because I wouldn't have been able to reach it. So just think about the orientation when you're stamping that. And then I'm just gonna kind of line it up 
where I'd like it in that stamp or in that punch, sorry, and I'm gonna punch it out. I'm done with that punch and I'm done with that ink. And I'll clean my stamp off. I use the Stampin' Scrub to clean my stamps off. So I've already moistened this with Stampin' Mist. Cleans it off and then dries it off. Really nice tool. So that's all finished and clean and can be put away. And we are ready to assemble our card. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a burnish with my bone folder. And I'm also going to go ahead and just lightly burnish that back fold piece. There we go. All right. Now, if you were going to stamp on the inside, you'd wanna go ahead and do that now uh, before you do all the decorating, just in case you have a problem. But remember, if you accidentally messed up on stamping, you could just put a piece in there, another white piece, and nobody would know. So it's not, it's not a huge deal. Now, I usually use my um, liquid glue, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my uh, Stampin' Seal Plus, I think. Yeah, this is my plus. And we're gonna go ahead and just stamp, stick this down. And I'm just gonna eyeball to try to make the border about the same all the way around. And that I have my clouds right side up. Definitely wanna make sure if you've got a orientation. And you may not be able to tell on this paper, but it does have little clouds in there. So you do wanna sort of make sure that that looks right. I don't know that anybody would notice if you didn't have it right side up, but just, just a note if you're using this exact same paper. Let's see. All right, so. I think that's the right way. And then the only thing I do with this piece is I try to line up the bottom. I think that you notice it if you don't, but remember you're gonna have much less of a border if you've cut it the way I cut it. I just prefer that, I don't know why. I think it's because you get this bigger gap in here and when you have that whole um, eighth inch of a border, if you cut it quarter inch smaller, it becomes such a big gap and for some reason I just don't like that. So this is how I prefer it. And then what I'm gonna do is just put these two clouds together and so I'm just gonna kind of decide how I want them I think I want them about like that. I'm just gonna put some adhesive on and line them up kind of the way that I want them staggered. That looks good to me. And then decide where I want them. Now remember, you don't wanna put any adhesive on this side. You can only put adhesive here. And so from that Y over, I'm good. So I'm gonna put some adhesive there and decide where I want it stuck. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Yep, I think that looks pretty good. Give that a good burnish to get that stuck down. There's my card. And then I'm gonna go ahead and embellish it. for my, uh, my words are hard today. Wow, really, really hard. So I'm using my take your pick tool. And again, I do think I wanna use the pool party, although it might be really pretty to use a contrasting color. Um, I think I'll stick with pool party though. All right, and I just think I want one on there. And then I think I want a couple down here. All right, so I think that's it. There's the second card. And I can write whatever I'm, thank I'm thanking the person for. There's my original card. So there you go. So again, this is a backfold card, super easy, really uh, small amounts of designer series paper that you can use on here. 
Um, and remember, you could even make this uh, front section in different pieces if you wanted to, piece some different um, designer paper scraps together. So you could do a lot with this. It's just a super easy fold, only uses a little less than half of a sheet of cardstock for the um, base of it. Really, really pretty. Let me know if you have any questions about this fold. Uh, if you've done this before, if you like this fold, um, let me know how you think about it and what you've used it for. Uh, I really love it. I think it's a great go-to. It's a really quick and simple card to make and you can use it for anything. So thank you again for joining me today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you are so inclined, I would really appreciate it if you would if you would subscribe to my channel. Um, I would love to get to 100 subscribers. That is just fantastic for me. So uh, I really appreciate it. And hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. Don't forget about the links that are down in the description and check out my blog post as well as uh, you can check out my Stampin' Up! store if you're interested in any of the products. Celebration only goes through the end of February, so if you want any of these celebration items, uh, you need to get your order placed by the end of February to be able to choose those. Lots of choices for you, so if these aren't the ones you're looking for, go ahead and check that out because there are a lot of choices, really great cel celebration items. So again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.